if you were young enough and lucky enough to have a television in the late 1940s, then you'll undoubtedly remember this show. Watch. This is Glockenspiel. Well, I, the I think we could, owner. we could handle one baby. Oh, no, Fran, I am not going to get into Fanna, this sort of thing. Well, and, and the address, It's too please. hot to argue about it. Now, don't yell, Fran, by the telephone. Fine. Well, well, I'm not yelling. Yes, one you are. One of my oh. sitters will be there. Oh. Thank you. Oh, oh listen, now. Why, well, I'm going no, to do it. Ollie, not at the time like I'm this. I'm sorry, please. my nose. Just a minute, Ollie, please. <sighs> That, of course, was from the classic children's television show, Kukla, Fran and Ollie, which first aired in 1947. Fran Allison has remained alongside her friends in one form or another ever since. Would you please welcome Fran Allison. <laughs> Boy, what memories that, I don't know if the word is dredges up or not, but Well, golly, yes, that's a good word. I remember there was one set on the block, and it had one of those funny things that magnified the screen because oh, it was yes. very small, and there were perhaps 25 kids and adults in the room watching it because only one person on the block had the set. Right. Now, that was live television. You did that five days a week, an hour a day. Now, am I correct? That was the first year, and then the second year... We went to uh, a half hour, but five days a week. But it, it was And not, it was live. It was so but live. But the point was that it was not scripted, am I correct? Oh, no. No script. You just got out there and... Well, we had an idea. We talked together. Sometimes it was built... Uh, the plot might have been built around uh, something that happened to either Burr or myself or someone in the office. Now, Burr Tillstrom is Burr the puppeteer. Yes. Yeah. And uh, responsible for all the voices. And uh, then sometimes we, uh, we would build a show uh, around a particular piece of music. Did Burr ever... Well, I'm sure he did. Did he ever pull any unexpected... Oh, he loved to do ...pranks that. on you? Well, can, well you, can you remember one for us? Not particularly. Oh, he did one... We had a great crew of, of uh, avid fans at Reader's Digest, the gentlemen uh, editors. Mm -hmm. And they wrote and said they never saw anything except just my head and shoulders. And they wondered what uh, my feet and legs might look like. <laughs> so one night, I certainly did not know about this, but Kuka and Ollie read this letter. And then they had the most horrible pair of shoes that you ever saw in your life. <laughs> and they had them with wrinkly stockings yeah, right. on pegs and they marched me <laughs> across the stage i could have died <laughs> but uh, it was all it was a challenge i i loved sometimes to to uh, think that that i surprised burr in something that i would say but in the years that we worked together we uh, we got so that we thought so consistently okay. alike that i would think in the to develop whatever plot we may have had, it would be just great if, uh, if, if someone would say this or that. Hardly would I have thought it till it was said. He has said it already. And he, in turn, would think, I wish Fran would ask me this or that, and, and I would ask. Yeah. I mentioned that, that in, in my recollections, there were children and there were adults in the room, and that, that was the, one of the interesting things about the program. You had many adult fans, and yes, you had some did. super fans. We had wonderful people in the arts who, who became our good friends. I stood so in awe of them, I was frightened to who, death. Who were a few of them? Well, uh, Tula Bankhead was uh, an A, one fan. She called us every night after the show. Critique the show? Just to call to say how my darlings are. <laughs> and uh, uh, then uh, she featured in, in this particular show, the excerpt from which you showed, where uh, uh, we were desperate. Uh, Dolores had had uh, offered to be to have a babysitting service, and we found ourselves drafted in to be the helpers. And we finally called Tallulah and asked him, and then we thought, what a terrible thing to do to a child. <laughs> but, <laughs> and uh, the, the lovely Gish ladies, Dorothy. And Lillian. And Lillian came very often. Now, I remember uh, one in particular where Yul Brenner hosted the show. Oh, yes. He, when he was playing uh, in The King and I in New York, he used to come over. We, we would have a, 
a dress rehearsal for uh, only for uh, music for sound and that sort of thing or any special effect that we might want to have and he would come uh, every day for dress rehearsal and then go back to the theater and put his makeup on and of course the director we had all those years was a wonderful gentleman who you have working with you now mm -hmm. Lou Gomovitz we Lou, absolutely Lou, adored him. He could Lou, do anything. Come on up here. I mean, I'm talking legend here. This is you like directed him. every one of them. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. I want you to know that this is one of the great. <laughs> television. Well, oh, okay. but we almost lost her to Kukla Yule and Ollie there for a while. <laughs> yeah. I wonder, ever regret that you never did anything different than Kukla No, and I did a few things. Um, I did uh, uh, Pinocchio with uh, Mickey Rooney, mm -hmm. and uh, I enjoyed that very much. And I did Damn Yankees, and I liked that. And I have had other offers to do things, and conditions at home weren't possible that, that would allow me to leave and so right. I didn't but um, I might do something again I would love to do something if I felt I could do it would you let Lou direct you again any day of the week <laughs> Lou I'm gonna put you on the spot out of Kukla Ollie and Fran who was easiest to work with Fran. Oh. <laughs> Coming up next, we'll take you out on the open road with some motorcycle mamas.